Carrie Salt Company, producer of salt for every farm and home use, brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before today's exciting adventure begins, I want to bring best wishes for a prosperous new year to each of you from the Carrie Salt Company. And that's more than just a friendly greeting. Yes, farm friends, your Carrie Salt dealer wants to help you make 1947 a prosperous year. He wants to give you free the new 1947 Cary Farm Record Book. This big 32-page book helps you know which crops pay out best. It helps you plan for profits. Then, too, the Cary Farm Record Book helps you keep a complete record of farm expenses to save paying too much taxes. So start the new year right. Ask your Cary Salt dealer for your free copy of the new Cary Farm Record Book. If his supply is exhausted, then send 10 cents one dime to cover mailing costs to Cary's, C-A-R-E-Y-S, Cary Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. Get your 1947 Cary Farm Record Book right away. And now, The Shadow. The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama... Shadow of Suspicion. A strike. And how do you like that, Mr. Cranston? Very nice. Very nice indeed for a beginner, Margot. Mm. Now, if you really want to see some bowling, watch this. Here goes. Oh. <laughs> Remember what you told me, darling. The ball is supposed to hit the pins. Oh, yes, yes, the pins. <laughs> My uh, foot slipped, Margo. Oh, Mr. Preston. Max, how are you? Do you remember Al Max Margo used to run the Club Canary uptown? Why, yes, of course. How are you? Fine, Miss Lane. You should have told me you were coming down here tonight, Mr. Cranston. We'd have laid out the red carpet on the alleys for you. We looked for you when we came in, Al. Well, I see your high-class bowling emporium is really going to town. Yeah, and it's strictly carriage trade, too. We only cater to the E-Light. Mm, that's very flapping, Mr. Mack. Oh, darling, I'm out of cigarettes. Al? Uh, sorry, Mr. Press. I'm strictly a cigar man. I'll get some. I'll be right back. Hey, don't take her on for a fast game while I'm gone, Al. She's done. <laughs> <laughs> You've known Mr. Cranston a long time, haven't you, Mr. Mack? Since I opened my first boob trap. <laughs> um, incidentally, there's something I'd like to ask you, Miss Lane, uh, confidential like. Why, certainly. Uh, Mr. Cranston hasn't had any uh, financial reverses recently, has he? Well, I don't think so. Why? Well, he sent a messenger down here with a note night before last, asking me for a couple of hundred cash. What? Why well, not worried about the dough? Mr. Cranston's signature on an IOU is as good as gold. It's just uh, the way it was done. You know, with a messenger at all? Oh, yes, that doesn't sound like Lamont. Uh, don't tell him I asked you about it, whatever you told us. Oh, no, of course not. Where is Lamont? He should be back by now. Yeah, he should. Maybe he's over by the bar. I can't understand that business about the money. He's not over there. Maybe the hat check girl has seen him. We're looking for Mr. Cranston, June. Have you seen him? Yes, he got his hat just a few minutes ago and went out the front door, Mr. Mack. We know. That's funny. Come on, a doorman may know where he went. You seen Mr. Cranston, Joe? I uh, just put him in a cab a couple of minutes ago, Mr. Mack. Well, I like that. Uh, did he say whether he was going home or not? No, but I heard him give the driver the address. It was 505 10th Street. 10th Street? Call me a cab, please. Well, now, wait a second, Miss Lane. If you're thinking of following Mr. Cranston down there, that's a pretty tough neighborhood. Don't worry about me, Mr. Mack. You better worry about Mr. Cranston. I don't like to be stood up. <laughs> Brownstone front is so dark and dingy. I have to go all the way up in the porch before you can read the number. Ah, oh, it's 505, all right. Honestly, I don't think I've ever been so provoked with Lamont in my life. 
Well, what do you want? Well, I, I'm looking for a man. Uh, Try the YMCA. No, uh, a friend of mine, Lamont Cranston, was supposed to come down here. He's a uh, tall and dark. And a handsome, yes. I suppose. Yeah, I mean, no. Uh, then... Play hide and seek in some other neighborhood, will you, sister? Well, I... <laughs> what was that? Sounds like Maria Munsell. Come on, sister. I may need some help. Up these, up these stairs here. Her room is right at the top of the land. Right here. Not a sound now. Come on. Only one little light on you. Can't see you. Oh. The knife. She's been stabbed. It's murder, that's what it is. It's murder. There's somebody in here with the killer. No. No, it's Lamont. Ah, so this is where your friend was hiding. What's happened, Lamont? That's what I'm trying to find out. Get away from that body, you killer. As soon as I found what I'm looking for. Stop it. You're trying to get away with the evidence. Darling, what in the world's going on here? I've got time to explain right now, Margot. You'll take time, mister, and you'll do your explaining to that cop. I'm afraid I can't wait for them. Where are you going, Lamont? I've got to catch a train. Come back here. Lamont! <laughs> Miss, could you tell me where I can catch the man on the express? Uh, track 17, which we'll have to hurry. It's leaving right now. Thank you. Excuse me, please. Miami Express departing on track 17 yeah, through, for please. Washington, Richmond, Atlanta, and Miami. Excuse me. Lord! Track 17? That's right. See your tickets, please. I'm sorry. Hey, you, come back here. Oh, missed it. Well, if it isn't Lamont Cranston. Commissioner Weston. I didn't know you were planning a trip to Miami this winter. When I talked to you last week, This you... came up rather suddenly, Commissioner. Oh, I see. Well, come on, I'll walk out with you. I just put Kennedy on the express with a warrant. He's going down to Richmond. I see. Yeah, I'll wait for you while you exchange your ticket. Exchange my ticket? Yeah, sure. Going to get the next train to Miami, aren't you? No, I, I don't think so. What is this? Police Master? Commissioner Weston, urgent call for you. Oh, urgent that's for me. For uh, come on, Lamont. I'll catch this call and I'll run you home. Well, thanks, Commissioner, but I'd, I'd better run along. Nonsense. I'll take the call right here at the information desk. Now, I'm Commissioner Weston. Was there a call for me? Right here, sir. Oh, thanks. Uh, Weston speaking. Oh, hello, Cardona. Huh? Where? What? 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 That's impossible. He's right here with me. All right, Cardona, we'll be right down. Yeah, I'll meet you at the office, and I'll bring Cranston with me. But Cranston, what do you know about a girl being murdered over on 10th Street? I, uh, I was there when it happened, Commissioner. Now, that's what Cardona tells me. And he also says it looks like you killed her. Really, Lamont, you don't seem to realize how serious this is. On the contrary, Margot, I consider it extremely serious. Then, for heaven's sake, Cranston, tell us all you know about the murder of Maria Munsell. I told you, Commissioner, I never saw the Munsell girl before in my life. I received an urgent phone call to come to her room when I was at the bowling alley. Cranston, do you deny this is your cigarette case? No. And do you deny this is your overcoat? Both the case and the coat were obviously stolen from my apartment. What about that train to Miami you were trying to catch when I ran into you at the railroad station? I've told you, Commissioner. I found an empty railroad ticket envelope on the floor beside Maria Monsell's body. And then you rushed out, leaving Margot alone with the landlady and the dead girl. Well, there was no danger there, but there might have been at the station if I'd been able to catch up with the killer. Cranston, if it was anyone but you, I'd have you held without bail on a charge of first-degree murder. As it is, I... I'm going to give you 24 hours to clear yourself. Thanks, Commissioner. With the understanding that if you can't clear yourself in that time, I have your word of honor that you'll report back here to headquarters. You have my word, Commissioner. Margo, please try and understand. I'll call you as soon as I've had a chance to check on some things. Well, if you think I'll be the most help to you by waiting in my apartment. You will. Believe me, darling. Oh, doggone it. Where is Shrevey? He said he'd be out here in front of headquarters, didn't he? He's probably up the hack stand on the corner. 
Wait here, darling. I'll get him. Pardon me, mister. You got a match? Yes, yes, I think I am. Over to the car, mister. There's a gun in your back. What? You're hollering. I'll bring you down right here. Get him. What's this all about? Just driving you home. You wanted to go home, didn't you, Cranston? I'll do the talk, and I'll... Well, if it isn't Big Nick DeSoto, when did you get back in town? You and the police commissioner thought you had me put away for a long, long time, didn't you? What's this all about, Nick? That's what I want to find out from you, Cranston. Did Eddie go gunning for you and lose on a fast draw? Or are you trying to get rid of the whole DeSoto family? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about my kid brother, Eddie, the guy you killed. I... What? No use playing innocent, Cranston. We got you dead to rights. Where are we going, Nick? We're going to your garage. Like Al said, Cranston, you're going home. You're going home to die. All right, Al. Pull it up alongside the garage here. Okay, Nick. Hey, fingers. I told you guys were never coming. I got the garage windows off tape. All right, Cranston. Out you go. I got him. Come on, boys. Let's get the garage and get this over with fast. Take it easy, fingers. Maybe Mr. Kranz would like to talk a little before he leaves us. Close the door, Al. Okay, Nick. You're making a big mistake, Nick. You made the mistake, Kranz. It wasn't enough to send me up the river. You had to kill my brother. I tell you, I've never even seen your brother, Nick. Oh. That's for lying. Tell him what you saw, fingers. I, uh, I came up to the alley just as Kranz's car was driving away. And there was Eddie. Somebody give it to him right in the head. Go on. There's a cufflink beside him with Cranston's initials on it. Show him the cufflink. Yes. This is a frame-up. I don't... Why did you kill Eddie Cranston? I didn't. I tell you. Why? He ain't gonna talk, Nick. Okay, let's finish it. Cranston, you're gonna commit suicide. Do not yes. fight, Cranston. You're getting it easy. Al... Help me hold his head under the exhaust. Okay. All right, fingers. Start the engine. <laughs> Breathe in, smart guy, to make it easy for yourself. How does it smell, Grant? Pretty strong, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll put him in his car in the driver's seat. Okay. Grab his legs together. <laughs> There he is. Okay, let's go. When you see Eddie Cranston, say hello for us. We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. But now, here's wonderful news for two listeners. I mean, this week's winners in the contest to suggest new uses for Gary Salt. Each wins a $100 17-jewel Harmon Gold wristwatch. The lady's watch goes to Mrs. Marion Noah of Agate, Colorado. She suggests this grand way for storing butter. First, make a strong brine of carry salt in an earthenware jar. Then form the butter into one-pound balls and put them in the jar, keeping the butter always covered with brine. Mrs. Noah says it will stay good indefinitely. Sounds mighty practical. The man's watch goes to Mr. Raymond H. Sobbing of Marywell, Missouri. He offers a suggestion for building a fence with green lumber. Instead of pounding a new nail into a green post and risking it pulling loose, Mr. Sobbing soaks staples in a strong solution of carry salt and water. The salt water gives the staple a rough coating, and it's sure to hold. Congratulations to both winners. And folks, if you'd like to win one of these beautiful watches, listen for the easy rules later in this program. Meanwhile, remember, for table and kitchen use, insist on Carrie's round package table salt. Yes, sir, carry salt is different. Carry salt is deep penetrating. It's only one of the many fine carry products for every farm and home use. Whatever your salt needs, always look for the white bag, box, or carton with a bright red band. Now, back to the shadow. Lamont Cranston, suspected of the murder of a blonde dancer and accused by gangsters of killing one of their gunmen, has been taken to his own garage where he is beaten thrown unconscious into the front seat of his automobile and left to die of monoxide poisoning. As 
The deadly fumes begin to fill his lungs. Cranston's head slumps forward, strikes the horn of the steering wheel. The piercing sound rouses him from his stupor. Where am I? Car. Monoxide fumes. Turn off the ignition. Door handle won't move. Gotta open the door. Uh, oh. Probably be flat on my back, darling, if I didn't have a little thing like a gang killing and a murder after beating the next 24 hours. You really think that negative will give you a clue to those killings? All I know is it must have dropped out of the pocket of one of the gunmen when he dumped me in the front seat of the car. Look, darling, the prints about developed. Yes. Pictures beginning to appear. It's a man's head. It's another face. A girl's. Hmm. Lamont, it's Maria Montsell. The dancer was killed at the boarding house, don't you see? Yes, and I see something else, too. What? A man. It was one of Big Nick's torpedoes. The one they called Fingers. And the gang must be tied up somehow with her murder. Or is that another one of your personal secrets? No more secrets, darling. There probably is a connection. Maria Monsell and this gunman were such chums, he probably was a frequent visitor to that boarding house. Yes. And that landlady might have a very good lead on him. <laughs> make a little more sense out of that old Harriton this time. I can't imagine she'll even speak to you, darling, after what went on last night. Let's see, let's see. Here comes. Ah, it's you two again. Hey, why ain't you in that jug, Buster? They're looking for a man who calls himself Fingers. Short, dark, black mustache. You're looking for a short, dark guy. Last night, your girlfriend was looking for a tall, dark man. What do you think this is, a lonely heart club? He's a friend of your late tenant, Maria Monsell. Listen, mister, I don't know whether you're out on bail or on the lam, but I'm not getting mixed up with any killers. See? Aren't you a little confused? I'm not the killer. I'm looking for the killer. I got eyes, ain't I? I seen you up in Maria's room right after she screamed. And don't give me that routine about you came here because you got a phone call. I'm not trying to give you any routine. I assure you, if you don't know this, Fingers... I don't. Very well, then. But Lamont... And this better be the last time I see you two around here. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Getting somewhere? This is the lead I've been looking for. I don't get it. Didn't you hear her say, don't give me that routine about a phone call? I didn't tell her I received that phone call at the bowling alley. That's right, you didn't. Well, how did you know about it? Because she's in on this whole frame-up, Margot, up to her neck in it. You think so? Yes. I'll be a lot surer when I've had a little talk with her as the shadow. Oof, I need a drink. Those two coming back made me jump. Yeah. Uh. Feel better now, Mrs. Hutchins? What? <laughs> what was that? that? Drink didn't do much good, did it, Mrs. Hutchins? You're still jumpy. Couldn't be that you're hiding something, could it, Mrs. Hutchins? What are you talking about? Who are you, anyway? Men call me the Shadow. I'm talking about a murder that took place right here in your house last night. Maria Munsell? 
Some guy named Cranston knocked you up. I want the truth, Mrs. Hutchins. That's the truth I hope. I saw this Cranston in her room right after she was killed. Yes, but someone was in Maria's room before she died. How do you know that? Who was it? The hoodlum they call Fingers? Yeah. Yeah, he's the one. He's the one who phoned Cranston and framed him for the murder. Where can the shadow find this, Fingers? I'll let you in on something big if you won't tell the cop, Shadow. The shadow makes no deals, Mrs. Hutchins. Where is Fingers? Well, he's about to blow town, but he's going to pull one more big job before he does. He cut me in on it to keep me quiet. It's a, it's a warehouse deal down by the waterfront. Fingers and the rest of the gang. <laughs> So I checked Margot, and this is the address of the warehouse where Fingers and his gang are supposed to pull off that waterfront holdup. You're going down there as the shadow? Give me until midnight, and have Weston and his boys come down and take over. But suppose Mrs. Hutchins wasn't telling the truth. Suppose this Fingers isn't down there at all. In that case, darling, I'll be charged with first-degree murder in the morning. Stop walking up and down the deck, Fingers. You make me nervous. Job's taking too long, Nick. We can't spend all night cleaning out this tub without somebody along the waterfront getting wise. We're just about finished. You're the boss, Nick. If it was me, I'd, I'd be satisfied to take a little less of this stuff and getting out a little faster. But you're not the boss, are you, Fingers? No, no, I'm not the boss. Hey, Nick. Yeah? That's the last truckload. They're ready to roll whenever you say the word. And you were worried about the job taking too long, Fingers. You should take it easy. You'll get ulcers. I got ulcers. Maybe we better check down below just in case, boy. Good idea, Al. Thing is, you go down and see if the boys got all this stuff out of the hole. Oh, now, look, Nick, we ain't got no time for no inspection. I tour. said go below, Fingers. Okay, Nick. Got to get the boys down on the dock to word, Nick. They're waiting. Everybody rushes me. Okay, boys, get those trucks rolling. Meet at my place outside of town. We'll follow you out. Say, hey, what's the matter with Fingers? He acts like he's just coming off a snow job. Ah, uh, he's just the nervous type. Out! Oh, what's the matter with him? Must have found something down in the hall. Come on. Come on, down here. What do you got down there, Fingers? Just another case. Let's let it go, Nick. I want all of it. Come on, we'll help him carry it up. We're coming down, Fingers. Okay. For a big guy. Here we are. I don't see any case. Where is the case, Fingers? There isn't any. But there's something else right here in my hand. Or down the gun, Fingers. Not this time, Nick. I thought you gave up the snow, Fingers. I did, Al. I gave that up when I gave up being small time. I'm going to be a big shot now. Let's talk about your personal life some other time. Let's not. Let's talk about it now. What do you want, Fingers? Things I can't get while you're living, Nick. I'm taking over your job. Wait a second. Don't worry, I'm not going to use the gun. I'm going to make it look like you two died legit. I'm going up this ladder, but you're staying down here. Look, Fingers, if you want a bigger cut. I don't want a bigger cut, Nick. I want it all. What are you going to do, Fingers? What are you leaving this guy here for? I'll show you, Al. I'll show you. See these little bombs? He's going to blast it. Not exactly, Al. These are rat bombs, and they're full of cyanide. It won't take long, and it might look like an accident. Max, Fingers, I'll make a deal with you. Have a rat bomb, big shot. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, isn't it, Fingers? Who's that? Very amusing watching men die. Where are you? I don't see anybody. No one sees the shadow, Fingers. Shadow? Drop that gun. That's it. All right, you two down there, you can come up. You stay right here, Fingers. I want to talk to you before the police come. Please. I want to know why you tried to frame a man called Lamont Cranston. You know about that? Talk, Fingers. You two hoodlums, listen. I want you to hear this story. I think you'll like it. All right, spill it, Fingers. Yeah. Yeah, I did train this crash. Uh-huh. I knew there was bad blood between him and the gang ever since he sent Nick up the river. He seemed like a perfect guy to take the fall for. You killed Eddie, you will. Shut you? up, Nick. You killed Eddie so you could move up in the gang, wasn't that it, Fingers? Al and Big Nick here would be next. Then you could take over completely. Yeah, then because your girlfriend got in the way, you thought you could make crash the fall guy for that killing, too, didn't you, Fingers? Yeah, yeah. Let me out of shadow. Yes, I should let you. Fight it out. I think I'll save you for the police. I'll see to it that you do a little longer stretch in the big house this time, Nick. A 
and you fingers will hang for that double murder. You say, Commissioner, that Big Nick, Al, and Fingers confessed everything? Yeah, we busted that gang wide open. Well, you'll certainly be congratulated, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, Cranston. I'm sorry, darling, but I still don't see why you were standing in that room with Maria Monsell's body when the landlady and I found you. Well, apparently Fingers had timed it so that I arrived at the boarding house just a moment before he killed Maria. Oh. Fingers must have gone out the window and down the fire escape just as I came in the door. I apologize for not believing your story about that urgent phone call amount. Fingers told us that he made Maria call you at the point of a gun and plead with you to come over. He used Maria to get Lamont over there and then killed her in cold blood. <laughs> nice guy. It wasn't enough he tried to frame me for two murders. He had to get himself a little ready cash and further incriminate me by forging my signature to an I.O.U. He incriminated you, all right, Cranston. As the saying goes, he really cast the shadow of suspicion on you. Shadow of suspicion is right, Commissioner. <laughs> Very right. <laughs> Friends, here's a happy way to start off the new year. Sit down right now and send in your letter in the Carry Salt Contest. This week and every week, the Carry Salt Company gives away two gorgeous $100 17 Jewel Harmon Gold wristwatches. One man's watch, one lady's watch. And here's how you may win. First, write 100 words or less describing some new and unusual way of using any Carry Salt product. Second, print your name and address on your entry. Third, mail to Carries, C A R E Y S. Carry Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. That's all. Nothing to buy. No box stops to send in. You can write about deep penetrating Carrie's round package table salt or Carrie's meat curing salt or any Carrie salt product. Letters postmarked before midnight Friday will be judged in this week's contest and winners announced three weeks from today. The judges' decisions are final. All letters become Carrie's property. In case of ties, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Remember, the prizes go to the writers of the most interesting letters. So make your letters as interesting as possible. Send your letter to Carrie Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. Better jot down that address now. It's Gary Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. Mail your letter today. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime. There's a bit of root. Crime does not pay. The shadow does. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Carrie Salt Company brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Remember, there's a Carrie Salt for every farm and home use. Look for the package with a bright red band. And don't forget Carrie's exciting new contest with two beautiful $100 Harmon Gold wristwatches given away every week. Mail your entry now to Carrie Salt, Hutchison, Kansas. <laughs> This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>